To our focus today, only 16% of eligible population in Nigeria have received their full doses of COVID-19 vaccine, even though we have surplus of vaccines in the country. To address the situation, the Association of Community Pharmacists in Nigeria have decided to partner with the National Primary Health Care Development Agency to achieve health immunity by making sure 70% of its eligible population get vaccinated. How do they intend to achieve this? We'll find out after this break. The program is still held to digest, and like I told you, we'll be talking about um, COVID-19 vaccination drive in Nigeria. Uh, presently, uh, 15 African countries, uh, nearly a third of the continent's 54 nations have fully vaccinated and 10% of their population against um, COVID-19. The 10% um, target was given by the World Health Organization. And then um, here in Nigeria, uh, we have about 15%, 16% of fully vaccinated Nigerians. Nigerians. When we talk about fully vaccinated Nigerians, we have those who have received their first and second doses. And to discuss this with me today is the pharmacist Wale Oladibolu. He is a national chairman association of community pharmacists of Nigeria. And welcome to the program. Thank you very much. We have um, countries who have um, surpassed even the 10% uh, uh, target given by the World Health Organization. Yes. We have others who have done 60%. Mm -hmm. We have some who have done 20%. Yes. And yet in Nigeria, we are still struggling um, getting 20%. And even when uh, uh, the secretary to the government of the Federal Republic mm -hmm. said the other time that by 2022 we'll do 70%. Are you worried about the situation? Yes, I'm very worried about the situation because the interest in COVID-19 vaccination is waning. People are not ready to be vaccinated. The thought is over. But I keep telling everybody that cares to listen that it is not yet over until it is completely over. Uh, Right now in Nigeria, we are hovering between 15.8% and 16% of fully vaccinated adults. We need to do more. To achieve herd immunity, we need about 70% coverage of COVID-19 vaccination. And uh, we are just too, way, too far behind in the race to get people vaccinated in Nigeria. So what could be the major reason for all of this? Um, one, one of the things is uh, that Many Nigerians don't even believe that COVID-19 exists. Many don't believe that the vaccine protects. But I've been telling people since 1796, vaccination has been protecting people indiscriminately, without discriminating. It has been protecting children, it has been protecting adults, it has been protecting women, and it has been protecting men. So vaccination works, but the interest in COVID-19 vaccination is waning largely because of uh, people who don't even believe that it exists in the first instance. But we have to remove that from our mind because all over the world we know that uh, uh, about 15 million people died of COVID-19 related ailments. And uh, every soul is important. Even the soul of one single Nigeria, the life of single Nigeria is important. So we are still appealing to people to please just go ahead and do vaccination. After all, all the misgivings that we had initially were of what COVID-19 could do to the body, all those misgivings have been removed because we have people who are vaccinated in 2020 and they are still alive today and they, are, they don't have uh, they don't have, a, 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 so to say, side effects or adverse effects of those vaccines. So it is time for people to believe again that vaccine works and that COVID-19, it is important that we keep vaccinating because uh, we never can know. Coronavirus has been existing even because before SARS COVID-19. And uh, so there could be mutation, there could be a, a new variant emerging. And who are the people who will suffer it most? People who have not had vaccination. So that's why it's important that Nigerians should just keep faith with science. Because when we discover other medicines, you believe, why is it different from COVID-19 vaccine? Could the level of awareness also uh, be a major problem? Because I had a trip to Edo uh, State the other day and yeah. um, I had the opportunity to speak with one or two persons resident in Benin City yes. and they talked about lack of awareness. Are yeah. we doing enough in terms of awareness? Uh, Both from the federal, the state and the local government level. I, I, I will give Nigeria 100% when it comes to awareness. That is the reason. Uh, COVID-19 is self-advertising. You don't even need to talk too much. We know what we pass through. 
we know that there was a time you can't move from one uh, one city to the other in Nigeria. We know the time there was a time there was a total lockdown. So even if you are a child in the village, you know that we have passed through something. There was a period you can't even a basic health care needs can't be fulfilled in the hospital just because of COVID-19. So that's why I said it is self-advertising. The publicity is enormous. So people know about it. I do, the problem is just the unbelief part of it. ACPN mm. have decided to partner with um, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency yes. and to bring vaccine vaccination rather closer to the people. Exactly. How do you intend to do it when you have so much disbelief around? How do you intend to achieve this? In fact, that's a master stroke as far as I'm concerned. It's a master stroke because the community families are closer to the people. Uh, most of the time when you have to tell people to go to health facilities, they will ask you, is my sickness that much that you cannot handle it? So they believe so much in the community pharmacies. So bringing it closer to the people means that more people will come to believe it. Because you can just step, you can step into a community pharmacy and you can um, be there and somebody will make inquiries about COVID-19 vaccination and you tell the person that it's available, you could be there and the person will take the job and come out. So that improves your belief in it. Then community pharmacies, like in my place of practice, we have practiced for almost two decades. They take my advice very seriously. So when I tell them that this thing, the adverse effect, effect is almost non-existent. And if I tell them that this thing saves life, they tend to believe me more. So by National Power Care Development Agency partner with community pharmacy, it's like you have taken the war down to the grassroots where people can listen to their community pharmacies, where the people can go and easily assess uh, the, 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 the health care needs. So uh, it's a master stroke as far as I'm concerned because people trust community pharmacy. They work for extended number of hours. They believe what they are doing. They can easily see other people being vaccinated unlike what you have uh, when you have to go to uh, ed centers or what we have to go to general hospitals they can easily see people walking get vaccinated and come out so that's a plus for for national primary care development agency and i i know that the figure will improve tremendously but if uh, companies are granted assets uh, countrywide so do you think you get to the 70 percent before the end of the year 70% may be a tall order because we still have some problems in some states. Right now in Nigeria, there's only three states that are vaccinating in community pharmacy. Mm -hmm. eh? Lagos, mm -hmm. FCT, and River State. We still have a lot of bottlenecks with other, some other states. We are the Executive uh, Secretary of the Primary Care Development Board of those states. Uh, are uh, putting a lot of stumbling block towards people grant getting access to COVID-19 vaccination. And for me, I find it difficult to believe because I see it that if you are in a place where you can drive government policy so that people can have access to health, if you block such policy, then they are invariably uh, killing the people by default. So have there been any kind of um, response from the national to address that is yes issues. uh thankfully enough the doctor Faisal Schreib is on top of the matter and he has promised that he's going to uh, speak to those uh, service secretaries from states where we have not been able to get traction with COVID-19 vaccination coming pharmacy and hopefully before the end of this month we'll smoothen it out so that vaccination becomes accessible to about 6,530 community pharmacy in Nigeria. So you can imagine, even if they do 10 vaccinations per week, that would be adding about 65,300 to the figure every month. Now let's talk about the challenges yeah, you may likely face. Uh, storage facility, how do you tend to store these vaccines when they get to you? Yeah, we, are, we, are, we have been able to come around it because what we uh, we know that some of this vaccine has to be stored at plus two to plus eight degrees. Uh, a lot of pharmacy have that facility because already they sell vaccines, they dispense vaccines, they offer vaccine to the people. So they have that facility, but notwithstanding, the arrangement that we have made is that in such a way that the uh, um, clients that wants to get vaccinated will be listed for a particular day. 
and then the community pharmacy will accept the vaccine directly from the uh, national storage facility or the state storage facility on that same day of the vaccination and the vaccination will be carried out that same day so that mm -hmm. these vaccines don't have temperature excursion so that's what the way we have come around it logistics no. what about logistics logistics we are bearing it community pharmacies nation we are bearing those logistics because it is important if our neighbors are healthy we will healthy as well, especially when it comes to viral infection. We don't want a situation whereby people will come into the community pharmacy who uh, are properly infected and they transmit infections to other uh, clients who are coming to the community farm. So we are offering this service at uh, absolutely co no cost for the next three months. And uh, after three months, we can sit down and discuss again on how to go about it. So the only thing you're getting for primary health care is the vaccine? Yes, the vaccine. For the first three months? Yes. Okay. So we are not being paid and uh, honestly speaking, we really don't mind because uh, the health of the community is priority to us. So is it just COVID-19 vaccine you're, you're, you're handling or you're integrating other uh, childhood vaccines yes, as well? Yes, we, we are going to integrate other routine immunization into this program. Uh, this is just a, a leg into the vaccination program for us in Nigeria. Uh, we have a technical working group in partnership with the National Primary Care Development Agency making a makeup for available pharmacists and people from Primary Care Development Agency who are looking at what do we need to put in place so that routine immunization can take place in community pharmacy. And once we have that, we can say bye-bye to a lot of vaccine preventable diseases in Nigeria. Okay, thank you very much. Before I let you go, I just wanted to quickly say what to Nigerians concerning COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, I, I, just, I want to tell Nigerians that COVID-19 is still there and we don't have, need to let down our guards. So please approach the community pharmacy near to you and seek more information about COVID-19 vaccination. Thank you. Would they be giving their cards as well? Yes. Uh, they all, for all the pharmacies, they, uh, they, they, they have access to national electronic uh, vaccine management system. Okay. And then they can also have their cards there, which is valid anywhere you take it to. Thank you very much. Um, I have been speaking with uh, the National Chairman Association of Community Pharmacists of Nigeria, Pharmacist Wale Oladigolu. Thank you very much Thank for you. sharing your time with us. Thank you. I'm grateful. All right. The program is Health Digest. We'll bring you more after this break. Stay with us.